This video is brought to you by Skillshare. For two months free, follow the link down in the description. Hey, what's going on guys? This is Mike from MoboxGraphics.com and we're back with another video. This time we're gonna be taking a look at how to create this existential crisis, I guess, in a, what looks almost like a TV screen. It's pretty obtuse and weird, but um, I thought it looked pretty cool. Um, there's some basic techniques here, nothing crazy. If you're new to After Effects, I think you're gonna learn a lot. If you're an advanced user, you may pick up on a few things but uh, probably not quite as much. Anyways, let's just go ahead and jump into After Effects here and take a look at how to create this. I'm just gonna start by creating a new composition, composition new, and I'm just gonna name this um, base, and I'm gonna set it to a thousand by a thousand, or that's actually a thousand by 1080. Let me create that by a thousand. And I need this to be no longer than like five seconds and just hit okay. And now I'm going to create a line. If I hold shift, it will make sure that the line is straight. And I can't really see the line because I get this checkerboard background. I'm just gonna click this toggle transparency. That way I don't have a problem. And for your reference, this is an eight point um, line. So next thing, I'm just to create my line grid, I'm just going to open this up and add a repeater. And I'm gonna open up this repeater and then open up the transform repeater and I'm gonna change some of these settings. Um, the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna uncheck this little chain for scale. And I think I need to increase the scale. Um, no, maybe I don't. Maybe I just need to change the position. Uh, there we go. So I'm just gonna change this position to something like 27 and um, increase the number of lines and you'll see here that they kind of go off off track So if I toggle here now scale now I'll be able to expand them out and I'm just going to make Kind of enough lines to get me through plus a few more. So maybe 42 Maybe I'll just do 50 just to have a round number and then I'm going to drag this up just until it looks about even So I think that that looks cool I'll probably end up moving this later, but already that's starting to look a bit like an existential crisis just because it's probably making your monitor freak out. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm going to create a text layer and I'm just going to put help. I think it's useful to use a very bold text for this. If you don't, you might not get the result that you're looking for. Another thing to note is you're gonna want this text to be white. Now I'm just going to add a fast box blur to this text and maybe set this to something like, I don't know, three. Three is probably plenty. We could always increase it later if we want. Now I'm just going to add an effect called displacement map onto my lines. Since I have some effects on this text layer, I'm gonna make sure that when I select help, my help layer, I'm also gonna select effects and masks. And you can see here that we're already getting some nice bump there and I could turn off that help. And you can see that we're already starting to have something that looks pretty much what our outcome looks like. Um, for our horizontal, horizontal displacement, we could just set that to zero because we actually don't have any horizontal displacement. But just in case you do, you're gonna wanna change this to luminance in case your lines are going a different direction and then increase your horizontal displacement. For vertical displacement, I'm gonna again go to luminance and I'm gonna crank this up to maybe, I don't know, 11. I think that that looks pretty cool. And just so you know, if you make it negative 11, you also get a different effect. So um, it just depends on what you're looking for. Next up, I'm just going to set a keyframe for position on this shape layer by clicking the little stopwatch. And I'm going to drag this layer while holding shift all the way to the top of my composition. And I'm gonna go to like two seconds and I'm gonna drag it up two bars. Hit N on the keyboard and just drag this shut and right click and trim comp to work area. Now, this should loop seamlessly for me. And it does. So we're pretty much 50% of the way there now. Select this help and select this. Um, actually, let me give you a tip by the way. If I move this help around, it will also move around my transform. However, if this is a pre-comped or 
um, you're using or you're scaling this. So if I hit S on the keyboard and scale this up, sometimes it won't work. Um, I found it doesn't work really well on vector layers or pre-comp layers sometimes. So what you will need to do is add a transform to the help. Another thing that that does is when you have transform on here, you could change the opacity and it will adjust the height. Just so you know, if you had transform, you could do a lot more um, interesting things to this. And if you run into errors, that could be a solution. So I'm just gonna select help and my shape layer hit and hit control shift C and make sure move all attributes are in the new comp. And I'm gonna name the new comp tutorial and hit okay. Let's just pause the tutorial here to have a word from our sponsor, Skillshare. Skillshare is an online learning community for creators with over 25,000 classes in design, animation, business, and more. Skillshare is the perfect place to learn from creators you already love, like this one on character animations from Jake in Motion. Whether you want to boost your creativity or career, Skillshare is the perfect place to keep you learning and thriving. Join the more than 7 million creators learning on Skillshare. Follow the link down in the description for a two-month free premium membership. Premium membership is more affordable than other platforms at less than $10 a month and gives you unlimited access so you can join the classes and communities that are right for you. Thank you for Skillshare for making this video possible. Let's get back to the tutorial. So from here, I'm pretty much going to just start layering on some effects. First thing I'm going to do is create a layer new solid and make a semi black background and hit OK. And I'm going to scale this up by hitting S on the keyboard. Um, some of the effects that I'm going to use are would actually cut this off if it wasn't scaled up properly. Next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to create layer new adjustment layer. And I'm, now I'm going to start layering some effects. So the first effects I want to layer on is CC lens. And set this to 340. And here's kind of a stylistic choice, of, choice that you can make. So you could have it con to converge. So you get the effect that it that it's almost like the edges are being peeled or towards the back of your head, or you can have it pretty much diverge, which means it gets pulled away. This kind of looks like a, a old vintage TV. So I think that this looks pretty cool, but um, this also looks cool. So it just depends on your application. I'm just gonna set my convergence to, you know, negative 200. Next, I'm gonna going to add a transform. So I got this transform effect um, from Erica Anderson on Twitter. I think her handle is Erica of Anderson. And the way you get a really cool vintage wiggle effect is if you um, hold alt on the stopwatch on position and set an expression. And I'm gonna set my wiggle time or my, my wiggle time, yes, to 25. So that means it will wiggle um, for every frame. And I'm going to make it move 0.5 frames. So now when I play this, you can see here that it's wiggling um, quite a bit. Now, um, you could look online as to what, what the first item means and what the second item means and, and how to get it to work. Um, this may not be looping absolutely perfectly, but due to the nature of the wiggle and how quick it is, you almost can't even tell if, if it is wrong. Um, but these are the settings that I think look the best. And so it's starting to look like an existential crisis now. I'm gonna add a glow to this and drop it onto my adjustment layer. And for glow, I'm gonna go real simple. I'm just gonna go seven. And that just adds a very light glow to this. Um, what really will give me the effect is the channel blur. Which I'm gonna set the red blurriness up to, I don't know, maybe like eight. It's a good round number. And now the last thing I need to do is just add a new adjustment layer on top and add a noise. And I'm going to increase this noise. I like a lot of noise personally, uh, but I know some people don't. But I think 10 is a good amount. And see if this dark shape layer was set to only 100, uh, it would peel it back. But I want to increase it so that way we get it all the way around. And now when I hit play, you're kind of getting that existential crisis look. Now let me look at the example and see if there's anything else that we need to change. I think that that looks pretty cool. Um, one last thing that I thought looked kind of interesting is if you go into the um, pre-comp here 
and you click on this shape layer and animate the displacement. So I set a keyframe, so I'll hit you on the keyboard to see that keyframe. And maybe uh, halfway across the composition, I set this to negative 11. And then at the end, I set this to 11. Just drag this keyframe over. You get kind of a, another weird looking effect there um, that I thought kind of looked cool. You could even smooth these keyframes out. Um, I will. I would use a um, Mount MoGraphs tool here, but if you don't have that tool, you could pretty much just set the keyframes to look like that. So I thought that that looked pretty cool. Anyways, guys, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please be sure to leave a like, subscribe, check out other videos on this channel. And as always, thanks for watching.